All right, so yesterday you guys did that uh, troubleshooting of a dryer. And before I go into the answer of the questions in the test, I want to just talk a little bit about the basics and how how you're supposed to look at it, because I know for the, for the first time, some of you guys did this for the first time. That's really nice. Um, but let's take a look at a wiring diagram here. A simple basic diagram. And I'll call this line one, and I'll call this neutral. Okay? Look at this circuit. <coughs> Will this circuit work for the light come on right now the way it's drawn? No. No. And why not? Because the switch is not open. Switch is open. So it's not allow what is it not allowing to happen? Electricity is not flowing through. No, it's I want more detail. It's not con making contact. No. Okay. Anybody else have any other input? Yeah, line one and neutral is not reaching the load. Well, neutral is reaching the load. Right, so okay. Well, so we can have switches on both sides or one side, but line one, in order for this bulb to work, one side of this bulb has to be neutral. And the other side of this bulb has to be line one. We need those two wires, okay? You got your outlet in the wall. Usually the small one's line one, which is here, and neutral. neutral's here. In order for that bulb to work, one wire's gotta go to one side, the other wire's gonna go to the other side. But we have a circuit like this. All that wire is doing is going inside that outlet, and then we like cut the wire and put a switch there. Switch is open, current can't get to that light which is closed, current can get to that light. So let's talk about where should voltage be and when. So when we look at this, we want to use the light bulb as a dividing line. It's, it's a little tricky with voltage, and troubleshooting should be a voltage, but what you need to learn to do is to take your meter and use it as the dividing line between your line one and your neutral of your load. Whenever you're troubleshooting something, one of the things you want to look at is, okay, I go to my washing machine, my drain pump is not working. You have to get line one and neutral to that drain pump to get it to work. So you're gonna put your meter down here and see if you have voltage, okay? But in this case, line one is not coming here. Your meter, when you get a reading with your meter, your meter gives you a number, 120 volts, 60 volts, 50 volts. We talked about the refrigerator the other day. We said 12 volts DC, 5 volts DC. Your meter, if you think about it, acts as the light bulb in this circuit. So when you get a reading, it means this circuit is going to your meter and coming back out the same way it goes to your light bulb. Back in the days when they did electrical circuits, most technicians didn't didn't even use a, an electrical meter to get a value. They just used a test like off, like automotive mechanics. They would put a one end on ground and they would just touch to see where electricity is. And technically, we could do the same thing. If I had a test light, which was just a metal probe with like a screwdriver with a light bulb inside of it, and then I connect the other side of the ground, I could just touch here, and touch here, and touch here until I got electricity. If that was the case, if I took this lead right here and put it right here, would it light up right now? If I went here, would it light up? If I went here, would it light up? Yes. Yeah, because it is connected line one. And anything else back here? Now, before I go any further on that, when we troubleshoot a circuit, I'm gonna give you test points A, B, C, D, E, and F. When we do that test, every one of those letters that I gave you would be a test point in the machine because from this switch to the plug, all it is is a solid wire. The only way to get a reading is if you had like a real pointy meter lead and you went through the insulation into the wire. That's not how we would do it. But this is one end of the wire, this is the other end of the wire. This is one end of the switch, the other side of the switch. One end of the wire, other end of the wire, one end of the bulb, other end of the bulb, so forth. So when we're testing, we're not just checking the switch and the light and the plug, but we're also checking the wires and the circuit because 
And it does happen sometimes that the wires get broken. I've seen brand new machines from a factory, a wire get pitched between two pieces of metal and cut the wire. I had one Frigidaire washer that there was a wire behind the motor and as the machine was running, the wire was rubbing up against the motor. It, it shorted a little bit and broke the wire, but the insulation didn't break. So the motor wouldn't work on, on one cycle and one of the technicians changed the timer, didn't fix it, changed the motor, didn't fix it. It still didn't work on the low speed. It worked on high speed, but not on low speed. That is because that one wire was broken. Okay, so how do we check that? How do we troubleshoot those points? So if we're to take a meter and we check for voltage here, we're gonna put one meter lead, and I'm gonna use red and blue for, red for line one, and blue for neutral, okay? I'll put one meter lead here, and one meter lead here, and I'm gonna check for voltage. Now, when I'm doing that test, I'm checking for voltage, but what am I really checking? Curve. Huh? Curve. Take your hand away from it. Curve. No, I'm not checking current. You mean what component? What, am I checking the light bulb? You're checking, you're checking if the voltage is reaching to the point where you're measuring the current meter. Okay, so I'm testing the circuit. And this is one thing you need to understand between ohms and voltage. If I put my voltmeter here, I'm not testing the light bulb, I'm testing the circuit coming to the light bulb to see if electricity is coming to the light bulb. If I'm checking ohms, and this was not voltage, I can't take the V out of it. If I was checking ohms, if I was checking ohms, I'm just checking through the light bulb to see if the light bulb is good. Okay? I should put. Alright, well, let me take the let me take the O out of it. Okay, I thought it would. So I'm testing voltage. So if I test D to E right now in this circuit, what is my reading going to be? Zero, Zero volts. So with voltage, I should only get two readings. I should get 120 volts or I get zero volts. In this case, because this switch is open, I have zero volts. So D to E equals zero volts. <clears throat> Make sense? Okay. What if I take this red wire and I move it over here to C right now? You're still going to get zero. I'm still going to get zero volts. Why? Because um, you're not. You don't have line one. Line one is not making contact with anything. Okay. Um, so what happens if I take my meter lead and move it to B? You'll get a reading. Okay. So C to E also equals zero volts. <clears throat> What's my next test? B to, B to E. B to E. And what do I have there? 120. 120 volts. Okay. What if don't look at the way it's drawn. What if, oops, what if C to E, well, let's go here. What if D to E was zero like we had? We moved one meter lead. This red wire is one of my meter leads. We got two meter leads on our meter. This one stayed here. So we're only moving one meter lead. We're taking alligator clips and we're clipping it down there so it's firmly there. We take this meter lead and I move it here. What if my meter lead said I have 120 volts there, but when I was here, my meter lead said I had zero volts? What does that mean? The problem is between the short. No, it means that the line is broken because if I have voltage here and I say C to E is 120, but D to E is zero volts. Well, if I have voltage here but not here, that means electricity had to come down. Line one had to come down through this switch and it had to make it 
in and out the other side of the switch, meaning the switch was closed. But I didn't make it to here, so that means this wire is broken. I have it here, but I don't have it here, so there had to be a break somewhere in that wire. And so when we're troubleshooting, some of the common terms technicians use or electricians use is they call backtrack. And they go back and they say, do I have it here? No. Do I have it here? No. Do I have it here? Oh, I have it here, but I didn't have it here. You have to be at the very next possible test point. If I jumped from D all the way to B, I said zero volts here, and I go all the way to here and I said, oh, I got voltage, most of the times you would assume what? The switch, the switch is bad. You go and order a switch and it doesn't work. Well. If you would have just closed the switch and made a test from here to here and found voltage, you say, oh no, my switch is good because it's coming in and coming out the other end of my switch. The problem is, how could the problem be? How can I say, well, how do I know I'm checking the switch? You know, I go here, I don't have it here, I have it. But sometimes if you look at a switch, both wires on that switch are blue. Just for example, I'm picking a color. How do I know I'm on this side of the switch or that side of the switch if the wire colors are identical? There's no marking on the switch, like saying terminal B and terminal C. It's just a big black switch and the wires on, on both sides. What would I do? I test here, say so I got voltage, and just for the heck of it, I'm just gonna check the other side of the switch. If I have vol voltage on both sides of the switch, what does that mean? The switch is good. Switch is good. So if I have it here, but I don't have it here, I don't have it at my meter. I, I'm sorry, at, at my wire. So my meter says zero volts, 120, 120. Hey, I got it in and out my switch, boom, the problem is there. Now one of the mistakes people do, and it's not wrong, is, let me just use my... It's a mistake, but it's not wrong. Yeah. Okay. One of the mistakes people do is let's just say they move this meter lead here and they move this meter lead here, switches being open. What reading would I get with the circuit as it's drawn? What reading would that be? 120. Why would that be 120? Because you're still making contact with neutral and line one. How am I even making contact switch? with neutral? Because C <coughs> is connected. It run, even though it's not on, C is, make, is running Neutral's running all the way to C, even though the switch is not how closed. Is it, how is it running through C, though? Isn't that, isn't that weird? This is not neutral. I said neutral comes up to here, right? Yeah, but it goes through the bulb. The, yeah. The, circuit. the bulb still it's will the allow voltage to be. What actually happens in the diagram is, is it looks like this. Your meter. is like a light bulb. What kind of circuit would this be if this was two light bulbs? Series. Your light bulb is in series with the meter. And your meter will give full voltage. Now, because the light bulb is not glowing and on, you're going to get a full 120 volts. But Technically, it would share voltage through if they're both running the same, but since the circuit is not drawing current, the meter would give you the 120 volt reading. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? This is why I said people make the mistake, and so I haven't said what the mistake is, but is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing because you're going to get the wrong reading. Well, if you you're have voltage, the, right. the switch is open, right? Yeah, always the switch is open. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. What do you mean by the switch is open? How, how the switch is still open. The switch I'm is testing here and here. That switch is open. Mm -hmm. We are saying that if I check right now, B to C, I'd get a 120 volt reading, right? Yeah. Because line one would go to my meter, you mean and neutral would back neutral. feed through the light. I'd get a 120 volt reading. That means my switch has to be open, right? Mm -hmm. Not necessarily. No, that yeah. is that yeah. is that yeah. that is an accurate statement. But let's take a look at this. If I checked 
this circuit, I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E, F, just like before. And I put my, this not my red, is it? Yeah, my red meter lead here and my blue meter lead here. What voltage reading would I get in that case? You're still going to get 120. Why are you not going to get one? You're going to get zero. You're going to get, yeah, you're going to get zero. I'm going to get zero volts. Why? Because measuring with line one. They're both line one. It'd be like, remember when you guys did the, the outlet, and you had two two holes, you put one meter lead in here, one meter lead in here. What if I put both meter leads in the same hole? What am I going to get? It, the meter's not going to read. The meter's like a light bulb. It needs neutral and line one. Then. The, the light bulb, when the circuit's good, separates that circuit. And this is why it's not good to put both meter leads on the same line. Because here's where, here's where it'll trick you. Well, if the switch is open, like the last diagram, we have 120. If the switch is closed, what does it say? Zero volts. Zero volts. So if you have 120 and it's open, and you have zero now, what does that mean? Good. It's closed. Okay, so answer me this. I'm going to draw the same circuit. Okay, A, B, C, D, E, F. Here's my light bulb. I'm not going to do the circle yet. I'm going to take red and put it here and blue and put it there. We said when the switch is closed, we get what? Zero. 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 Okay. Then we'll put zero here. <coughs> what if my light bulb's broken and the switch is closed? What's my reading? If the light bulb is broken and the switch is closed. Yeah. If, if the filament in my light bulb is broken, and I'm still testing here. What's my reading? Zero. Zero volts. That's okay. The switch is closed, right? Yeah. But we said if the switch was open, if we said the switch was open here, and the filament is broken, or something else in the circuit's broken, and that switch is open, what's my reading? Zero. Zero because I can't get neutral. Zero. So zero doesn't mean closed or open switch sometimes if you're doing a voltage test in an electrical circuit. That's why you want to keep that blue meter lead over here when you do your tests. Because in this circuit where the switch is open and the filament's open, and I take this one and go over here and here, I'll have voltage right now with the circuit the way you see it. And I move this back and I have 120, 120, 120 all day. Even if I take this one here and move it back, I have 120 here and 120 there. That is a good, safe way to test a circuit. But if I take these two here, what do I get? Zero. 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 What do I get? Zero. Zero. What do I get? Zero. No, I'll get 120 wait, now. Wait, wait. Because this meter lead is what? Well, no, neutral. It's neutral, but it's, open, it's, it's broken. The ball. Okay, oh, yeah, so actually we got them. two things wrong in this one circuit. We got a bad bulb and an open switch. The voltage test is not going to oh, tell you both of them. The now, if I just went over here like this and had voltage and then I don't have voltage there, okay. then I know the bulb's open too. And I don't have voltage here. But what we do is we take one meter lead and we backtrack until we find voltage. Once we find voltage, that point from here where we don't have it to the point that we have it, that's where our problem is. So if my meter leads here and I don't have voltage, and then I find voltage here, problem is my wire because I tested from here to here, what am I testing the wire? Now if I got my meter lead here and I move it to here, what am I testing? The switch. If I go here to here, what am I testing? The line one going to the switch. So when we're doing voltage testing, we're checking a wire, a switch, a wire, a switch, and we're breaking the circuit down into little pieces 
but it's like bam, 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 bam. Well, I have voltage here, but I don't have voltage there. My problem is in where I lost it, right? Between these two points. But you gotta make sure you don't jump too far and make sure you only move one lead. Is a voltage test going to prove both problems at fault? No. What are the odds of both parts being bad in the customer's home? Not that likely. One part is usually bad, and you'll find it by going to the load and backtracking. But the thing is, as you go to the customer's house, and you say, oh, I see that you, I checked here and here, and I have voltage, but I don't have it here. Ma'am, you have a bad switch. So what do you do? You call the office, you order a switch, you come back two days later with the switch, you put the switch on, what happens? Good. Light don't work. <clears throat> if you change a part and you confirm the part was bad, we could have owned it out afterwards to confirm it. If you change the part and the part was bad, you put a new one in, brand new. One, it is possible the new part doesn't work. It happens, not that often. But if it still does not work, you need to go back to the load and start your test again and to see if there's another part at fault. It could have had two of these switches, another switch here, and both of them could have been bad. So you check the one, no voltage, no voltage, no voltage. I got voltage. Ah, that's my problem. That switch is bad. You're right. You made a good diagnosis. That switch was bad, but the voltage test doesn't tell you if you have two broken components in the same circuit. It doesn't happen often, but sometimes a part like a motor may go here. The motor had an internal short and had an internal short, and what could happen to the switch if you had a short circuit? You could blow up the switch too, right? One thing you could do is try to bypass the switch and see if that motor works after that to confirm that's the only thing wrong. But if the motor shorted out the switch, what will happen if you bypass it? You blow up that part too. So the best thing to do is if you find a switch open, what one more test could you do before you leave and say, okay, I'm going to order this part, I'm done. Home out the load. Just home out, make sure that the load gives you a good resistance reading. You found the switch, it's bad. Just go back to the load, check for continuity. Make sure the bulb is not shorted. Give you a zero ohm reading, but it should have three ohms or 40 ohms or 100 ohms. Make sure it's good when you replace it, that it's going to function. I had uh, a former student uh, who did air conditioning once, central air, and he's like, Richard, can you come down and, and help me out? He says, man, transformer's bad. I put a new transformer in, the machine's still not working. I changed the transformer again, the machine's still not working. He says, I don't know what to do. I said, Man, that thing's like 25 miles away. For those of you, there was Country Walk, which is like maybe about, what, about half an hour drive from here? And I told the guy, he says, man, for me to go down there? Well, it was back then, Pedro, <laughs> not now. Okay, so I said, leave me some parts. Leave me a contactor, leave me an evaporator, fan coil, uh, uh, a relay, and, and a uh, uh, transformer. I go down there, sure enough, the transformer takes... 240 and steps it down to 24 volts was shorted out. I went outside to the contactor, checked the coil of the contactor, was shorted. Changed contactor, put the transformer in. I was out of the house in 15 minutes. The guy paid me 250 bucks, plus he left the parts for me to install. It was worth it. But he was blowing out the transformer. He didn't bother. To, that transformer only sends part power to three parts. The thermostat on the wall, the contactor, and the fan relay. All I had to do was home out those two components. Why did the transform blow up? So sometimes this switch could be bad, but it's because something else made it bad. Doesn't happen often. If you're not 100% sure, don't just order a switch until you confirm the part. Any questions on that, guys? Okay, let's go to the actual test. Because that's where you all have your uh, problems. Okay, so here we are with a Whirlpool wire uh, dryer wiring diagram. 
And what happened is I gave you some test points. It says complaint dryer does not start. And if we look at the first few test points, A to B 120, A to B 120. Is that good or bad? Good. good. This is neutral. That's line one. Don't get confused. Some people see this line right here and think this line is a wire. It's not. It's just saying from this wire to this wire. It has little arrows. You should have 120 volts. And that's what we said. The next test, uh, A to C, 240. A to C is 240. That is also a good reading. All right? So let's go down to L and M. So we're testing the motor circuit. One thing you want to do when you're troubleshooting before you put any meter on the machine and on the diagram is you want to look at the diagram and try to figure out what is the circuit that is supposed to be running right now. You want to identify the path that electricity is supposed to be flowing through. So then when you're when you're looking at it and looking at the machine, you got to go back and forth. So I'm going to use the green one for now and say that circuit actually red, I'm sorry. That circuit goes through here, goes to this part, goes here to here, goes to your push to start switch, goes here to here and out. All right? And I said L and M, we're going to check for voltage. The very first thing we did with the test A and B and A and C is voltage to the machine. Right? So, we want to check when a machine doesn't work. Let's just check the outlet for power before we take panels off. Don't just start taking screws off and start testing the whole machine out because you might be wasting your time. You go and take the whole machine apart and the customer has a blown fuse or a circuit breaker in the house, you're wasting your time. All right? Now, in real life, you wouldn't go right to L and M on the motor with your meter. Why? Why wouldn't that be one of your first tests after you've confirmed that this machine has power? Because it's all the way in circles. Because to get to that motor, you got to take the panels off, take the drum out, and get all the way down to that motor, right? So, in in reality, we might try to go to components up in the control panel that we could test, maybe from I to G on the start switch and the timer. And see if I have power that far. If I have power in I and G, then I know my push to start switch, my door switch, and my timer will all be good. Then my problem's down to the motor or something down that way, we got to go down there. So in reality, we look for a shortcut like, man, I've got to take that whole drum out and everything just to make that one test. Let me see if I can just open up the control panel, make a test right here, see if I got voltage <coughs> at those two points, and if I do, I'm going to take this meter lead and put it right here on the timer here and put this on the start switch here. I press down on the start switch with my meter stuck in the, the, the wires there. I don't pull any wires off when I take test. I just stick my meter lead to those two wires Say, do I have voltage? If I have voltage, that means what? What is good? Motor. No. Well, your door switch, push your start. Your door switch is good. Your push the start switch is good. Yeah. And your timer switch is good. The one thing you, I'm going to say this for the people, but the one thing you told me that helped me, when you do that test and you get something good, everything back that way and everything from that point back that way is good. Yes, and that's what I said in the, that light bulb circuit, that remember, when I'm doing the voltage test here, I'm not checking what's in between my meter leads. I'm checking for the meter lead back here and this meter lead back here. I'm checking the circuit from the plug down, not from in between my meter lead. If, if I had my meter lead there and I was checking what's in between, what type of test would I be making? Ooh. An ohms or resistance test. A voltage test checks back to the plug. An ohms test checks down between the two wires. Okay? So if I did that test, it'd be good. But let's go back to here. When I did L and M, based on the readings that were given, the, what did it say here? Zero volts. That means I'm not getting voltage to my motor, right? Yeah. Is it a neutral problem or a line one problem? It's what? We don't know yet. 
So when we do backtrack, we either have to move this leader lead back to line one and leave, the, leave this one on neutral, or we have to leave this one on line one and backtrack on the neutral side. Now every time we take this test, as long as this lead is down in this area, I have to press manually on the start switch to make that test. All the other switches, like the timer, you have to make sure the timer's in the drying cycle. You can't make sure the timer's in the off cycle, I'm not gonna read. You have to make sure your door switch is closed. All right, make sure your door's closed. Now, sometimes we'll just open the door and push the button and listen for the clicking. Could mean the switch is good or bad, but a meter is still going to be the only way to prove that it's good or bad. So there are shortcuts to it. I'm just talking about if you're giving these readings, what is bad? So we could sit there and say, yeah, but first thing I do is open a door and start pressing on the door switch and listen for a clicking. Yeah, you could do that. Just because it clicks doesn't mean that it's, it's good or bad. I've had switches click on microwave doors, and, and they're still bad. Okay? So let's continue with our test. A to M is 120. So that means I got one meter lead on A here and one meter lead on M and I have 120. So what does that mean? The problem is L1. The problem is L1 because I don't have it here, but I do have it here. So it is here at L1. So what does that mean about my neutral side of the circuit? That all behind a good oh. My neutral side of the circuit's good because from here to here, my meter said I have voltage. So I don't even need to do any other any other test back here. Anywhere I touch here, it's gonna give me a voltage reading, as long as I'm on A. So let's see what the next test is. L to B. L to B says zero volts. That means my line one. I don't, I don't even care about B anymore. I don't worry about that test because the last one just before told me that side of the circuit's good, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go down. K to M. <coughs> K to M says what? Zero, zero. zero volts. It's still your line so, one. no. So now I take this meter lead here and K to M. I know this side's good, so right here, I still have voltage here. So I'm on one side of my fuse. What did I just test from L to M to K to M? I tested what? That blue wire right there. The wire from the motor to that thermal fuse on the back. All right? Next test, J to M is 120. So I went here J to M, and I had 120 volts. Now what? That was between J and two. So from here to here, I have voltage. But when I was here, I don't have voltage. So something's bad. So what's bad? Fuse. The fuse. One side of the fuse does not have voltage. The other side of the fuse does have voltage. So if the fuse was good, I'd have voltage on both sides. I didn't come in the fuse and out the other side. The fuse is bad. So a fuse can have one bad terminal and the other one's okay? No, like inside the fuse is broken. So power can go into the fuse, but the fuse has a little tiny wire from one end to the other inside that little glass tube or whatever, and that fuse breaks. So power comes in, doesn't make it out the other side. 